Hello there, warm welcome back to Mr M for Chem's YouTube channel. We're going to have a go at some more physics today. This refers to 0654 IGCSE coordinated science. We're going to have a look at AC generators and DC motors to allow you to successfully answer questions in your forthcoming examinations. Welcome to the show. Here we have a GIF and a couple of images which uh, I've stolen from the internet. They are freely available to help you to understand how an AC generator operates. I expect most of you will have covered this in class. So hopefully this is not an introduction, which is not its function. This is revision and to allow you to get a decent grade in your exam. So AC is alternating current. We can see a graph on the bottom left hand side of the screen. A clear thing which is missing, which is different to a DC motor, is there is no external power supply. If it asks you to compare and contrast, that's perhaps one of the first things that I would be writing down. First of all, we know we have a magnet. We have a north pole and a south pole. And clearly, the magnetic field lines, or perhaps better, the magnetic flux, would be going from left to right with an arrow pointing in a left to right direction. This is the magnet. This spinning rectangle here, this is called the armature, A-R-M-A-T-U-R-E. This is the armature which is spinning in response to its position in reference to the magnetic field. So the coil is then, the armature, sometimes called the coil, is connected to brushes. So brushes, and these press on two metal rings. Okay, so these are contacts between the armature itself, which is going to be made of something which is magnetic, not it's iron or steel. We're then in contact with these two metal rings, which could be made of copper. Copper is a great conductor, so we need something that's going to conduct our current uh, to a useful source. And then key thing here is we have slip rings. So these are called slip rings. Slip rings only apply to the AC generator. They do not apply to the DC motor. The purpose of these slip rings is basically to maintain electrical contact. They maintain electrical contact because as this is spinning around, if there were not slip rings, as the name suggests, it allows it to slip around. And you can see now and again, there's a slight jolt. There it was in the GIF animation. If they were not allowed to slip around, then these wires here, taking the alternating current off this generator, would become tangled up. They would all be wrapped around this central spindle, which is here in blue. So different to the DC motor, they do not reverse the current. We'll do DC motor shortly, but they are there to allow a complete circuit to be created. At the front here, we have a galvanometer, or it could be a, an ammeter. And what we are seeing is we can clearly see at different positions of that spinning armature we are reading both positive and negative current, and of course, voltage as well. You cannot have one without the other. So how does it do this? Well, here is the armature down here, a wire connection here, and these are not connected. So this can slip in one direction, can spin in the down direction. It's connected to this part of the uh, armature. See this part's just spinning around here. That's going to be forever going around in this direction. And this one is also going to be going, there it comes around, there's the brush that comes around here, in the same direction, but not connected to the front one. So in the same direction, but not connected to the front one. Now clearly, these two pink areas are moving all of the time. There will be a spindle through here of some description. And here's the rotation uh, angle. In contact with these two probably copper slip rings, we have carbon brushes. Now, a carbon carbon is great. It's probably carbon graphite, 
and graphite is a great conductor of electricity because it has free electrons which enable it to conduct. And as this spins around, we're getting positive and negative deflection and the alternating current can be taken off and used uh, for whatever purpose we want to put it to. So key points so far, no external power supply, slip rings, not a commutator, and also the slip rings do not reverse the current, but a commutator does, which we'll look at shortly. As the coil cuts, it cuts the magnetic field lines, it's cutting the magnetic flux here, and that inextricable link between electricity and magnetism is the reason why an electromotive force, you can say EMF or you can say PD potential difference, they are interchangeable, is generated. And this is why a current flows. This graph down here, I like this down here. This is, this is A. Now this is actually into the plane of the paper. Imagine this is three dimensional. This AB is into the plane of the paper. This is the uh, orientation of the armature. So here it is actually parallel to the lines of flux. So we're getting zero volts. As this spins, we get it to be perpendicular at 90 degrees with the lines of flux. Remember this is into the plane of the paper, 90 degrees. So this will get maximum voltage. So A has spun around to here, B has spun down to there. And this is the armature here. As it's gone through 180 degrees, it is passing through being parallel again with magnetic flux. So therefore we have zero volts. As we go on, instead of A to B, we now have B to A. It's upside down in reference to the original orientation of the armature um, rotating. We then have it again perpendicular to the lines of magnetic flux. And that is when we get maximum voltage. At the end, we return back to the resting position where we started 360 degrees from the initial state, state and there we are again parallel with the lines of flux and we have zero volts. This is why we have alternating currents because it's the orientation of the armature with reference to the lines of magnetic flux which are generating the alternating current. The slip rings maintain electrical contact and stop this thing all tangling up together. Let's have a look at some questions. So key points on the AC generator. What is the purpose of the slip rings? It is not to reverse the current. They do stop the wires tangling, but on the mark scheme, it will say <clears throat> excuse me, to maintain electrical contact. If the wire is parallel to the magnetic field, what does this mean? Zero or maximum? You got it. Zero volts. And if the wire is perpendicular to the magnetic field, this means? You got it. Maximum volts. You're often asked to label this thing. How do you learn it? Do it again and again, watch a video, watch a GIF, read some texts, use as many different methods as you can to get it into your beautiful brain. Now this is a busy slide, isn't it? That's the DC motor. Let's quickly flick back at the AC motor. The AC motor was quite nice and gentle, look. That's good. No external power su uh, supply. And we also have slip rings on the AC generator. Fast forward to the DC motor and we have this alarmingly increasing rate, fast spinning um, armature, again, uh, or coil in the middle, which um, is spinning around in the external magnetic field. How does a DC motor work, which is different to an AC generator? Well, first of all, we have this external power supply here. So we're going to pass a current through the coil, through this rotating spinning rectangle, a current is passed. So this is an external power supply, supplying electrons, generating a current within the coil. 
As you know, if you have a current, you also have a magnetic field. You cannot have one without the other. This, in, this current induces magnetism in the spinning coil. So this coil is now a magnet itself by virtue of the current going through it. Electrons, I'm trying to follow it round, electrons are passing through. You can see the yellow dots, they are there to simulate electrons. This generates its own magnetic field, which cuts through the permanent external magnetic field. We can see here the magnetic field lines, just like any bar magnet, coming out of north and going into south. As this induced magnet here interacts with the external magnetic field, then we produce what we affectionately call the motor effect, or it's just movement. You can ask you sometimes, what do we call this? Students seem to forget it's the motor effect. It is that. Learn it, deal with it, move on with your lives. Now the forces are opposite because the current is flowing in opposite directions. Well, what do we mean by that? In conventional current, the electrons flow towards the negative. We know it's incorrect, we just accept that. In conventional current, the electrons flow towards the negative. Okay. So here we have positive, here we have negative. The electrons are coming towards negative, they're being pushed around. I wish I could stop this GIF if they were on this side. They're going from me into the plane of the paper. And then we're on this side of the armature, they're coming out of the plane of the paper towards me as the observer, which is uh, looking at this DC motor. So the stages are a current creates a magnetic field in the armature, which is spinning. This induced magnetism interrupts, interacts with the flux from the external magnet, and this is what creates the movement, that crossing of the field lines by the internal magnet. And forces are opposite because it's flowing at one point into the plane of the board or the paper or the slide and on the other side out of the plane. So hence, when it pushes up on this side, it pushes down on this side. In the AC generator, we use slip rings. On the DC motor, we're using a commutator. Now, the commutator's job is to reverse the current's direction every 180 degrees. These two, this oft, it's often represented in this manner, these two partial semicircles of light blue, which are apparently floating in midair, which obviously is impossible. Um, how, how we visualize or we uh, represent a commutator. Here's one that's more, more uh, correct, if you like. So the pink again is copper. Inside here, we've got non-conducting material. As this spins around, spinning around here, the commutator, this is again in contact with carbon brushes. Here's the current in to go around and the current back out here. So this is what I was explaining earlier. Earlier, Current in from me into the plane, current returns from behind the slide towards me. So we are getting direct current produced by virtue of the induced magnetism cutting through the field lines in the permanent magnet. One of students' most favourite things to do is to hold up their left hand. Now I'm aware there is lateral inversion on this camera. Hopefully you can see my hand. Okay. Thumb for movement, forefinger for field, and second finger for current. So remember it always comes out of north and goes into south. So on this one, we're going to get my finger here. So my forefinger is in line with the field lines on there. Second finger current coming towards me and that's the push up on the right hand side of that uh, spinning armature. You do have to practice this kids. It's not always as straightforward as you think. But take your time. You have time to answer these questions. There it is again. Fleming's left hand rule. Don't be doing that in the exam. That's not on the IGCSE 0654. It's on later syllabi but not on yours. So what's the purpose of the commutator? It's to reverse the current direction a hone every 180 degrees to keep the ring spinning in the same direction. If it wasn't there, I'd be doing this backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, flipping. That's what the commutator does. How do we predict the direction of movement? Fleming's left 
hand rule. <laughs> Isn't the question often asked? How do we increase the force of the motor or the strength of the motor, the power of the motor? What, what, what can we do? Going back to the diagram, what can we actually do to increase the turning force created by that DC motor? Well, you could use a stronger magnet. The stronger the magnet, the more magnetic flux or field lines are generated, the more the, the frequency that those are cut, so the stronger the turning force. You could increase the current and of course the voltage as well. And you could also use a larger area of coil. That's normally a two mark question. So any two of those would get you the mark on how to increase the force of the motor. At this point, hopefully you have two to three differences between a DC motor and an AC generator. You know that your slip rings are AC, your commutator is DC, you know reversing current is DC, not reversing current is AC. And to predict the direction of movement, you use Fleming's left hand rule for the DC motor, not for the AC generator. So I think it's over to you now. You need to do some past paper questions. It's one thing to learn it in class. Another facet of that is watching a video just like this to have another little review. But you need to go off, do some past paper questions, test yourself, particularly Fleming's left hand rule. I hope you enjoyed this video. Smash that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.